Okay, good evening and welcome to our webinar tonight. We're uh, glad that you are here and taking time out of your busy schedule to learn some more about ways to uh, remove some of the toxins in your home. Um, as an introduction, my name is April McBride. I'm an executive leader with Young Living. I've been using Young Living essential oils um, for about three and a half years now and I have seen all kinds of amazing results from them, and I love sharing with people what I've learned, and I'm excited to share with you tonight about some of our amazing essential oil infused products and some cleaning hacks so that you can green your clean. Um, I do need to make a disclaimer before we get started. Um, we are not medical professionals, so we can't diagnose, treat, or cure you, but we can share information that can help you make better decisions for your family. So let's get started. Why might you want to change the products that you're using in your home, like cleaning products, as well as personal care products? Well, I used to think that if it was sold on store shelves, it was safe, but I realized through uh, some trial and error and then just through research that that is not the case. Um, several years ago, I noticed that I was getting headaches every time I would clean the bathroom and I realized it was from the cleaning chemicals I was using. And it made me very concerned as a mother. I thought if this is chemical cleaner is giving me a headache, what's it doing to my kids? So I started looking into greener ways of cleaning and that is what eventually led me to essential oils. Um, now it's important to know that when we breathe in cleaning chemicals, um, they're getting into our system, but also if we touch them with our hands, um, they're getting into our skin. Anything that we put on our skin gets absorbed into our body and it's in our bloodstream within about 26 seconds. Um, the average woman will put over 300 chemicals on their body in a normal day, and that's everything from soaps, shampoos, perfumes, lotion, makeup, all kinds of stuff like that. Um, and you know, if you're putting stuff that is questionable um, on your skin and you're absorbing it, you know, there's some bad uh, things that can happen over time, and it may not be an you know immediate reaction. Sometimes you might get a skin irritation or rash. From some of these products but sometimes you may not have a reaction like that but over time you're taking in all these toxins and it kind of accumulates and um, can cause problems down the road so it's important to use non-toxic products now i know that can sound you know a little overwhelming at first but my whole idea about this is just take baby steps just change one thing at a time make one simple change and each day you know we're Every couple of days, try to change something else, and eventually you're going to be in a much better place than you were as far as um, being exposed to toxins in your home. Now, we're focusing on toxins in the home because um, everyone thinks of their home as their sanctuary and their refuge. Um, it should be a safe place to come, you know, go home to. Unfortunately, the air in um, the average home is five to eight times more polluted than the air outside and the pollution in our homes comes from these volatile organic compounds or VOCs that um, come out of a lot of the chemical products that we use. So um, it can be stuff from you know spray air fresheners or scented candles or the cleaning products we use. All of those can be contaminating our air and we don't want to be breathing in all of that junk. So some of the um, chemicals that you might be uh, wanting to avoid would be fragrance. If you see fragrance on a label, that means that there are synthetic chemicals of some sort um, and they don't have to be fully disclosed. So things like formaldehyde can actually fall under the fragrance label. And formaldehyde is a known carcinogen. Um, Obviously, if it's a carcinogen, I don't want that in my home, and I'm sure that you don't want that in your home either. Um, some other things to be aware of, um, triclosan, that is a um, antibacterial agent. It's found in a lot of, um, well, it used to be found in hand soaps. It's now um, in the process of being eliminated from hand soaps um, because it was determined that it wasn't safe enough that they felt comfortable allowing it in hand soaps anymore. But it is still in hand sanitizers. It's also in shave gels. Um, many deodorants, um, and also things that, that have microban. Um, it is registered as a pesticide by the EPA, and it has shown um, to cause disturbances to the endocrine system. Um, and also it's believed to lead to birth defects and uncontrollable cell growth. So that's another one you want to avoid. Um, phthalates, um, those are endocrine, endocrine disruptors, and 
some ways that you might see them on a label, um, bisphalate, diethyl phthalate, dibutyl phthalate, anything that has some chemical names with phthalate attached, you want to kind of avoid that. Um, that can be found in lotions, skin moisturizers, cleansers, um, cleaners, glues, and nail polish. So those are some of the things that we want to avoid. Um, now, there's a lot more that you might be uh, interested in avoiding. I will point you to these two books here, The Chemical Free Home and Chemical Free Home 2. These books are both by Melissa Pepping, and um, I believe I got these on Amazon. But they have a lot of great um, information about detoxing your home, and they have a lot of different recipes, do-it-yourself do kind of recipes for, you know, carpet deodorizer, surface cleaner, linen spray, you know, all kinds of stuff. Um, how to get rid of odors in your kitty litter box, all kinds of different recipes using essential oils in these books. So I highly recommend those. Um, another thing that I recommend is going to see how your current products rate. Um, the Environmental Working Group has a website and it's um, www.ewg.org. And you can look up, um, they have the Skin, Data, Skin Deep database. And then they also have um, another database that is for cleaning products. So the Skin Deep database is all your personal care products. So if you use secret deodorant, you can type in what kind of deodorant and it'll pull it up and it'll give you a rating to tell you um, you know, how safe or unsafe it is as far as um, being based on the chemicals in it. And it'll break it down and tell you what, um, what things, you know, are causing that rating to come back that way. Um, in addition to the personal care product section, you can also look up your cleaning products. So you can look up your Tide laundry soap or your Joy dish soap or whatever um, and see how it rates. Um, you know, if you're, something you're using is currently getting an F, like your laundry soap that I once upon a time used was an F. Um, obviously you probably want to change it to something that's got a, a higher level or higher grade level um, or better grade level. Now for the personal care products, it's zero to nine is the rating, zero being the best, nine being the worst. Um, and you really want your items to fall in the zero, one, two range um, to be considered you know, really non-toxic. Now, if you look up Young Living Thieves products, you will not find them on that database, but you can look up the individual ingredients and see how they rate. Obviously, that is pretty time consuming, um, but it's already been done, so you don't have to do it again yourself. I will tell you um, the results of what I've seen from the chemicals or the um, ingredients that are in the Thieves products, they all come back at a two or Oh, zero, one, or two. So they are all very um, good items to have or ingredients to have in these products. They're very safe. So um, I do encourage you to check out that website, www.ewg.org. Um, now I'm going to go ahead and um, pass it off to Crystal. Crystal Broussard is a senior star. Um, she was my partner in crime at the Southern Women Show last month, and um, she's going to start talking to you about uh, some, some of the things that you can do to um, make changes in your home. All right, Crystal, go ahead. <laughs> Thanks. Um, so hi, I'm Crystal. Um, I have been with Young Living for just a little over a year now. I am by no means chemical free but I'm making baby steps, just like April said. Um, you know, I make one swap this month and then, you know, in a couple of months I'll make another swap until eventually I'll get to where my whole house is, is chemical free. Um, it's just gonna take a while, but that's okay. Um, so I'm gonna talk to you about um, some easy things um, and April's gonna do the same thing. We're gonna talk to you about some easy swaps that you can make in your home to you know, whether you do it all at once or whether you do baby steps like I am so that you can start making that progress to having um, less toxins in your life. We all know that when a company produces a product, they don't always have the consumer in the forefront of their mind. They're, you know, their, their main goal as a company, as with any company, is to make money. Um, you know, there are tons of examples throughout our history where something that we the consumer thought was safe has you know weeks months or even years down the road has been determined 
okay, that wasn't quite so safe. Maybe we shouldn't have done that. I mean, think of, think of asbestos, you know, asbestos was used to build buildings for years and years and years. And now there is literally a billion dollar trust fund that was the companies that produce that product had to set up to pay people so that because they harmed them with this chemical, you know, think Erin Brockovich, she did the same thing. So um, companies don't always have our best interest at heart. You have to do the research. You have to look at um, the chemicals that are in your product. I encourage you to look at the ingredients list on every product that you look at and, and see, I mean, you know, my kind of rule of thumb is if, if I can't pronounce it, then it's probably not good for me. Um, so, you know, what are some simple things? The, the easiest, I would say the, the one that I did first is I was a candle nut. I loved candles. I burned candles all the time. Um, I loved the way they smell. It made my house smell good. I had, I also had the little Glade plug-in things all over my house because I just liked for my house to smell good. Um, but they are full of just, I mean, it. you burn the candle and it puts everything up in the air. The, the Glade plug-ins puts all of those chemicals in the air. And those <laughs> chemicals, if you look at the ingredients, there's going to be some that you can't pronounce. And then there's going to be the word fragrance. And that word fragrance is where most of the chemicals that are harming us are thrown into. It's like the catch-all for all of the bad stuff that, you know, they don't necessarily have to um, name individually in their thing. All of these chemicals, they're, they're known carcinogens. They're known to cause respiratory issues. They're known to, do, to mess up the hormones in your body. Um, they're known to have um, influences on your reproductive system. So, um, you know, even, even at the lowest of levels. Um, so the, the fastest, easiest one that I was able to do was get rid of my candles and get rid of my Glade plugins. And the way that I did that was by ordering the premium starter kit, getting my diffuser and throwing all of them away and using the diffusers instead. Um, in 2014, there was an article that was published in the Scientific America magazine, um, and it showed that exposure to the chemicals in candles, the, the plug-ins, those kind of stuff, even at the lowest of levels, has impacts on a child's asthma. Um, so, you know, think about that whenever, whenever you're... Um, looking for an easy an, an easy thing. Like I said, that's probably one of the fastest, easiest ways that you can get chemicals out of your house because we all want our house to smell good. I mean, you know, you don't want somebody to come in your house and be like, ugh. So, you know, that's an easy one. Um, the, next, the next switch that I made um, was in my laundry room. So, um, I'm going to actually read you what I found today. Um, scented petroleum-based laundry detergents contain high levels of VOCs, which I had to look up what a VOC stood for. It stands for volatile organic compounds. These chemicals are linked to asthma and can cause cancer. They add to the indoor air pollution and absorb through your skin, which can create a host of problems. So, um, these volatile organic compounds, they can cause all sorts of long-term health issues. In your laundry detergent, I, I looked this up today, <laughs> in your laundry detergent, there are at least seven ingredients in, in almost any laundry detergent that are hazardous air pollutants, known hazardous air pollutants, which means you're breathing them in and they're known to be hazardous. And at least two of them are classified as carcinogens and the safe exposure level is zero, literally zero. Um, so, you know, whenever, whenever I looked that, you know, I've already made the switch to Thieves Laundry Detergent, which is great. 
But whenever I read that, I was like, oh my gosh, you know, I've been washing clothes with regular laundry detergent for years. What kind of damage have I already done to my body? But you know, I have to let that go. I have to move on because you know, I've, I've made the switch, which is the first step. Um, the other thing that I found today whenever I was researching for the webinar tonight is um, that the Association of Occupational and Environmental Clinics has said that um, the ingredients in fabric softeners, laundry detergent, and dryer sheets, they call them asthmogens, actually increase the chances of anyone, whether you're a child, an adult, anyone, um, of, in, of getting asthma, whether you're You've never had problems before, it increases your chances of getting asthma. So, um, you know, the, the, laundry desert, the, the laundry detergent and fabric softener and dryer sheets are another really easy switch that you can make. Um, Young Living has the, the Thieves Laundry Soap. It smells, it has like a citrus fresh smell. Um, it has natural enzymes, so your clothes do get clean. Um, and then, of course, it has the essential oils infused in it. And the great thing is that it's super concentrated. So the bottle, I should have went upstairs and, and got one. Oh, look, April has one. <laughs> um, the bottle is a, is, is a small bottle. And when I first got it, I was like, oh, my gosh, I'm going to have to, like, buy a gazillion bottles of laundry detergent because, um, you know, my – we go through, I don't know how many loads of laundry every week, but it's so concentrated that that little bitty bottle actually does 64 loads of laundry. Um, so it's the same as going and buying one of those huge tubs of, of laundry detergent from, um, from the store. The other thing is, and actually this is the promo, the, um, this month, in Young Living, if you do your, um, if you order from Essential, I mean, if you order from Young Living, you can actually get these for free, um, but these will replace dryer sheets. They're just little wool dryer balls. They're all natural. You take um, a dryer ball. I actually usually, I usually put like three in my dryer, and then you just drop a couple of drops on each ball and throw it in there, and that way you don't have to use dryer sheets. They're great. It actually reduces um, your drying time and um, it makes your clothes smell great and I get to switch scents so if I get tired of smelling like citrus well, then I can pick lavender or if I get tired of smelling like lavender maybe one day I I want to believe in everything so I'll switch to believe <laughs> so yeah the, the I love the dryer balls they're one of my favorite things um, the other easy switch that you can make is um, if you use something so like Febreze to like spray your couches or your carpets or whatever to help your house smell good, you, you can make your own spray. It is the easiest thing in the world. All you need is a little bottle like this. Um, put maybe 10 drops of whatever essential oil you choose. Put just a pinch of salt and then fill the rest with water and you have instant Febreze. So, um, that's another really simple switch and you know exactly what's in there water salt and essential oil so easy easy um i think i'm gonna flip it back over to april for a minute and let her talk about some other easy switches that you can make thanks crystal um so I'm going to talk to you about um, not something that we clean our house with, but what we clean our bodies with right now. Um, and that is hand soap. How many times a day do you wash your hands? I can't even tell you how many times. It's a lot. Um, so there's uh, a couple of different options for hand soap. Young Living does make Thieves um, Foaming Hand Soap, and it comes in containers like this. There, um, It smells great because it's got thieves in it. Um, and you can also get a bigger refill container. Um, so you don't have to keep getting the foaming pumps. You can just refill the ones you have. Um, we love that. But also, um, sometimes I feel like 
doing, you know, some DIY projects, simple DIY projects. I'm all about low maintenance projects. So I will make my own um, foaming hand soap. And um, this one I need to refill, but um, I just get a foaming pump and you can get these online um, on Amazon or AbundantHealthForYou.com has a lot of um, great oily containers. And that's where I think I got these foaming um, pumps from. But um, to make it, I use Castile soap. So this is Dr. Bronner's Castile soap. You can get this at um, grocery stores and like the natural product section. A lot of times I know um, around us, Wegmans has it. Um, I know where I used to live, I used to get it at Kroger. Target carries it. You can also get it on Amazon. Um, but it's, um, they have different scented ones. I like the baby unscented because I don't want anything scenting, you know, my Castile soap. But basically, to make the foamy hand soap, I just fill this container a quarter of the way with Castile soap. And then I add in my essential oils. Um, I like to use Thieves because um, Thieves, you know, it's all about immune system support. It's great, um, you know, we, we have a Thieves line for a reason. It's great for cleaning. Um, so I'll put about eight to 10 drops of Thieves essential oil in and then fill the rest with distilled water and then shake it up. And then I've got my own, um, you know, homemade foaming hand soap. So those are two different options. If you like the DIY route, you can do that. Or if you're like, forget the DIY thing, just send it to me already made. The Thieves foaming hand soap um, is great. Um, another product for hands. Um, the Thieves Waterless Hand Purifier. Now this, um, unlike a lot of the hand sanitizers you'll find in the store, this does not have triclosan in it. Um, it has a Thieves um, scent, but it's also got a pep more of a peppermint scent because there is peppermint essential oil in it as well. Um, it does a great job of getting your hands clean when you can't get to soap and water. Um, and I always carry that in my car, in my purse, you know, I always, after pumping gas or getting in from uh, grocery shopping or whatever, I always make sure to use some of that. Um, and it's sold in two different sizes. It comes in a little um, size, which is perfect for your purse or whatever. It also comes in a bigger container with a pump on it. Um, the next thing I'm going to talk about, we're going to switch back to house cleaning again. Um, this is my favorite thing outside of the um, essential oil starter kit. Like this is the first thing I got. It's the Thieves um, household cleaner. Now I told you that I was getting headaches every time I was cleaning my bathroom um, before I discovered Young Living. And I had tried different green cleaners, hadn't been happy with them. So I was like, okay, well let's, let's see how this Thieves cleaner that I keep hearing about works. Now it is a, a super concentrated cleaner. Um, you mix one part Thieves cleaner to 30 parts water for most uh, applications. You can actually dilute it more to do your floors. You can dilute it less if you need um, a heavy degreaser. But what I do is I'll mix it up. This is a 16 ounce spray bottle. So one bottle of the Steve's Household Cleaner when you dilute it at the 30 to 1 ratio is going to make about, I think it's about 30 or 29 or 30 of these bottles. So it winds up costing less than a dollar per spray bottle of cleaner, which is extremely economical. Um, now, in addition to using, you know, diluting it 30 to one and using it on counters, tubs, sinks, toilets, glass, all of that stuff, you can also um, use it um, as a laundry booster. Some people will put, um, they'll take a, the cap and add a cap full of this to their um, laundry as well. Um, in with their um, Thieves laundry soap as an extra booster. Um, you can, I actually just saw a video um, the other day about someone who likes to dilute their um, laundry soap. It is super concentrated. Crystal mentioned you get 64 loads out of it. That's for a standard machine. If you have a high efficiency machine, you actually use half the amount. So you get 128 loads out of it. So it, it goes a long way, even though it's a small bottle. But this video I saw the other day, um, the woman cuts it in half. So she'll pour out half the bottle and store it for later. And then she adds, um, I think she said three capfuls of the Thieves household cleaner as a booster into her Thieves laundry soap and then fills the rest with distilled water and uses that. And she said it cleans, they, she's got a household of six and it cleans their laundry really well. So that's another way to make it stretch even further. And it sounds like it still cleans really well for her. I have not personally tried that, but um, I thought that was pretty interesting to dilute it a little bit more because it is so concentrated. Um, so Thieves Household Cleaner, 
is incredible and I love it. Um, now there's a couple of other things that I did wanna mention from the Thieves line, a DIY and a not DIY option, and that's the Thieves wipes. Now this is um, a little package of wipes that you can get. You can use these on small surfaces. Um, it's, it's a small package so it can fit in a diaper bag or a purse if you wanna um, wipe off the grocery cart handles. You know, I know some stores have wipes there, but I don't know what's in those wipes and maybe stuff that I don't really wanna be absorbing into my skin. These I know are fine. Um, I know some people who take these on airplanes to wipe the tray table down because who knows if those ever get cleaned. Um, but these are great for small surface cleanup. Um, so they do smell very much like thieves. They smell really good. Um, so this is the non-DIY option, but you can also make a DIY version of your own. Now, obviously this isn't going to fit in my purse the way this would, but um, what I did here is um, I got this container from the dollar store and um, on the inside, it's got, it's, you can say I've used a bunch of them, but it's got a half a roll of paper towels. So basically I just cut the roll of paper towels in half and then put it into the container and then um, to moisten them, I use um, a cup of white vinegar and um, a, a tablespoon of the Thieves Household Cleaner and then a cup of distilled water. Mix that together and then just pour it in over the paper towels. And now I have, you know, Thieves wipes I can use on all the different surfaces um, at my home. Again, not so great for travel. That's where this one would definitely come in handy. But that is another um, quick DIY hack you can uh, use. I don't have a problem sending my kids, you know, go clean up the bathroom with their Thieves wipes or the Thieves household cleaner because I know that there's nothing bad in it. Um, so another thing I wanted to mention is um, that you can make a carpet deodorizer um, using baking soda and purification essential oil. So purification is the odor eater of essential oils. Um, it is great to remove any kind of odors. Um, if you've got any kind of like a musty basement or lingering cooking order, odors, it's great to put in the diffuser. Um, but also um, you can make an easy carpet deodorizer instead of those like cans of powder that you would shake on your carpet with who knows what in them. Um, you just mix some baking soda with a few drops of purification, stir that up, spread it out over the carpet, let it sit for 10 or 15 minutes, and then vacuum it up. Um, side note, it also works really well if puke gets on a mattress. We have tested that and it, it worked amazing to get the smell out. So um, that is another fun, easy DIY. It just takes a minute to like, you know, stir it together and then you've got that one. Um, another way that you can clean your home um, with a more green, green uh, method. So I'm gonna pass it back to Crystal for a few more swaps. Great, thanks, Inkler. Um, So I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit more about the kitchen um, and then I'll, I'll switch gears um, to the bathroom, but um, a couple more things that you can try in the kitchen. One um, is the Thieves dish soap. Um, this you could, uh, I actually got free last month. I hadn't tried it until last month. Um, but now I'm loving it. I went on the website that April was talking about um, earlier in the webinar, the um, Environmental Working Group uh, website today, and I was just looking at the different dish soaps because I was like, you know, I, I want to see how bad what I was using was for me. And so they tested and, and, it had a count. I didn't actually count all of them, <laughs> but they tested 232 different dish soaps. Okay. Of those 232 dish soaps, 58 of them had F's. Only 23 of them that they tested got an A. And all of the rest were somewhere in between. The one that I was using got an F. <laughs> so, so having, having the dish soap as a swap now, um, is, is great because now I don't have an F anymore. I get an A. Yay me. <laughs> um, the, they also make, um, the, the thieves line, which I haven't tried yet. Um, it's going to probably be one of my next purchases, um, is dishwasher soap. Um, April, I'm sure has it. There you go. <laughs> um, so that's going to be my next purchase. I haven't tried that one yet, um, but I'm looking forward to trying it. So that will take care of my kitchen. Once I have the, the dishwasher stuff, I will have officially converted my entire kitchen. 
So that'll be, that'll be a good day. Um, the other great thing that um, they have is a thieves uh, fruit and vegetable spray and they also have a soak. So unless you grow your own vegetables and even then you probably will put something on them to keep the bugs from eating them. I mean, it's, it's, it, when you grow vegetables or fruits, it's just something that you have to do. I get it. I understand it. Um, but any of the fruits and vegetables that you buy in the store have been covered in pesticides. Even if you buy organic, while they try not to, while Shay is typing to me, and so she's making me laugh. <laughs> um, while the organic ones don't use as many pesticides as commercially grown fruits and vegetables, um, they still do use, use, veg, uh, use pesticides. So the best thing that you can do to protect yourself, at least partially, is that fruit and veggie spray or soak. I wish that I had taken a video of it because um, I had bought some organic grapes and I'm thinking, okay, they're organic, they're, they're, they're pretty safe. And so I'd rinsed them off and I was about to eat them and I was like, no, you know, I'm going to get my, I'm going to get my veggie soap, soak and I'm gonna soak them. And I had already washed them once, but you should have seen the difference. Cause I like put the, put the veggie soak in a bowl and with some water and just sat them in there and let them soak for a little bit. That water was so gross. I wish that I had taken a video of it to like have a before and after, because even after I'd washed them, that spray took off so much more. And I was like, okay, I'm never ever eating another apple or grape or anything else without spraying this stuff. <laughs> so um, that's another great way uh, to make the switch in your home. And plus that way it cleans your, cleans your fruit and vegetables and um, you know what you're eating is, is good for you. Even better for you than fruit and veggies already are. <laughs> Um, the other thing that I'm going to talk to you, we're going to switch to the bathroom now. Um, one thing that a lot of people don't think about when they're thinking about living um, toxin free is their toothpaste or their mouthwash. Um, because, I mean, you know, your dentist says you have to brush your teeth. Our whole lives, we have been told, you know, brush your teeth and make sure that whatever you have um, in your toothpaste, it has fluoride because it makes your teeth strong and, and all this, which is true. Um, but you're only supposed to have it in very small doses and it's only really supposed to be when you're a kid, when your teeth, when you're getting your baby teeth gone and your adult teeth in. Um, so there is, I have to look at the word because I'm still not sure how to pronounce it. Um, there is a chemical that is in some of the toothpaste and mouthwash called triclosan, um, which can disrupt your thyroid function and your hormone levels. Um, if when it's been introduced into the environment, like through wastewater, it has actually changed um, uh, changed the set that like made the aquatic animals have sex changes. Uh, I'm not kidding. <laughs> so, you know, I'm thinking, okay, if it can make an animal completely change, then maybe I don't want to use it. So they have toothpaste and mouthwash. The mouthwash has kind of a a cinnamony minty kind of flavor to it it's really good and it smells good too and then the toothpaste kind of has that that same flavor um, but it's free of the chemicals that are normally in um, toothpaste like the sodium sodium laurel sulfate the triclosan <laughs> that uh, that I mentioned earlier as well as, you know, it doesn't have any aspartame. It doesn't have um, the propylene glycol. All of, those, all of those things that you just 
don't want in your mouth. I mean, you're, you are putting this stuff in your mouth. So it is entering your body. Even, you know, even if you don't buy into the whole, Oh, just because I touch it, it doesn't mean, or it's going to go into my skin or just because I put, um, you know, I clean and it, it touches my skin. It's going to enter my bloodstream bloodstream. Even if you don't buy into that, you put toothpaste and mouthwash inside your mouth, so it is in your body, so you should at least look at switching to that. <laughs> um, I think now April gets to continue with some other stuff in the bathroom. Yep, that's right. Um, so next up is deodorant. So obviously deodorant um, is important because we don't want to be stinky, um, but one of the things that I've learned is that um, most deodorant that's on the market is also an antiperspirant um, and those typically contain aluminum. And aluminum has been linked um, to breast cancer as well as Alzheimer's. So those are two things that I would like to avoid. Obviously, I can't control everything, but if there's something I can do to minimize my risk of, you know, developing something like that at, later in life, I'm all about it. So um, deodorant was one of the earlier things that I switched over. Now, if you are not into DIY, Young Living does have two de types of deodorant. Um, this one is Meadow Mist, and there's also Mountain Mint, and that's got a green label. Um, this is what I use when I'm traveling um, because it's easy to use. It's just a regular, you know, stick of deodorant. Um, at home, I make my own deodorant, and this is my little deodorant container. It's a little glass jar, and um, my deodorant is in there. I don't know how well you can see that, but it is. Um, it's made, my recipe that I use, um, there's a lot of different recipes out there. Mine uses coconut oil and um, arrowroot powder, as well as um, aluminum-free baking soda. And then I do use essential oils. I use um, purification and lavender, and sometimes um, I'll put tea tree in as well. Now, um, I mix it up, you know, melt the coconut uh, oil, in a container on the stove, add the ingredients together, it kind of solidifies. Depending on the temperature where you're keeping it, um, you know, it will determine if it's more solid or more liquid. Um, you, if you want something um, that's a little bit more liquid, you can add more coconut oil to it. I know in the summertime when it's warmer in, you know, the house, and just warmer in general, it tends to be more liquidy, um, whereas during the winter time right now, um, you know, the, that same batch of deodorant, it's pretty solid and you kind of have to like scrape it out to get it out of the container. Um, it is a little bit tricky to travel with just because of temperature changes and stuff. So that's why I do use the Young Living deodorant um, when I travel, but I do um, like this homemade version. It's super cheap to make. It lasts a long time and it's again, free of all the junk. Um, so, whether you're a DIY or not, you have some non-toxic um, ways to have deodorant so you don't smell. Now, these are not antiperspirant. So if you're used to using a deodorant with an antiperspirant, you might um, notice that you're feeling a little wet under your arms when you're adjusting to it. Um, I noticed that my body kind of adjusted with some time. Um, and there's also, um, generally speaking, when you switch to a natural deodorant from a conventional one, um, it may take your body a little while to kind of adjust to that. So um, be patient with the process. <laughs> Usually within a week or two, your body kind of adjusts. And I didn't, when I made the switch, it was during the summer. So I was like sweaty and hot and everything and I survived it. So, um, and I'm glad that I made the switch. And the next thing I'm going to talk about is moving into the shower. Um, so Young Living, um, I'm, I'm not like a DIYer for shower products. Um, you know, I don't make my own soap. I think Crystal, did you make some soap at one point? I did. Yeah. Um, that is something you can do. That's not something I've attempted. Um, but, um, Young Living has some great personal care products for the shower. So they've got a whole line of shampoos and conditioners. Um, this is Copaiba vanilla, which is my favorite, um, one that they've got. They also have a lavender one and a lavender mint um, for both shampoo and conditioner. And then there are several different um, shower gels. Um, so this one is Morning Start Bath and Shower Gel. It's got um, lemongrass in it, peppermint. 
It's very invigorating. It's great for a morning, which is when I typically take my showers. Um, there is a lavender one. So if you like to take a shower at night, that help you wind down. Um, there's a couple of other different um, bath and shower gel options. There's also a plain bath and shower gel base that you can add whatever essential oils you have and love um, to it to personalize it. So um, I used to go to Bath and Body Works and buy all the different scented um, shower gels. And now I can't even go near the store because I, I think I'm a lot more sensitive to those chemicals now that those are out of my life for the most part. Um, so I was really glad that Young Living has a shower gel because I do like shower gels. But if you're more of a bar soap person, Young Living has a whole bunch of different bar soaps as well. And there's probably like maybe 10 or 15 different um, scents that you can choose from. There's, you know, thieves, there's um, a peppermint one, there's, you know, different combinations of um, essential oils in the bar soap as well. So um, that kind of wraps up for, you know, cleaning yourself in the shower. So I'm going to pass it back to Crystal for a little bit more information. Um, so before we switch gears, um, sticking with the bar soap thing, um, if you want to DIY bar soap, it's super easy. All you need is um, a mold, like a silicone mold or any kind of whatever you shape you want your, your soap to be. And then they have, they sell it at, at Michael's. You can order it from um, Amazon. They have this soap base that's organic and it's all natural. And it comes and it kind of looks like, um, it kind of looks like the almond bark that you use in baking that you like break, break apart and you melt to, to make like chocolate covered strawberries or whatever. It kind of looks like that. And so you, you cut off however much you think you need to fill um, the mold. You pop it in the microwave and it melts. And then you add however many drops of, um, or drops of essential oil until I usually do maybe like five drops um, in, a, in a bar like this big. And you pour it in your mold. It sits for maybe 20 minutes and it solidifies again and then you have your bar of soap. So it's super easy. I mean, seriously, you pop it in the microwave, you put it in the mold, you're done. So it's super easy. Um, so I think, um, I think that covers all of the switches that we wanted to talk about tonight. Um, so how do you get all of this stuff? How do you start making that switch? Um, if you're already a Young Living member and you need ideas on what to purchase, um, certainly ask, ask me in April. If you're not a Young Living member and you want to get started, there's a few different ways. Um, Young Living actually um, offers, I think there's six different premium starter kits. Um, depending on, on what you want to do in your life to, to at least which switch is more important to you. When I got started, the switch that was most important to me was getting rid of the candles and the plugins. So I went with the diffuser and the oils um, so that I could get started with that right away. If you're more interested in, in the cleaning side of things and you're more interested in getting the, the laundry detergent and, and the thieves cleaner and the toothpaste and, and the mouthwash, all of the thieves line, then they have a starter kit that um, is geared towards thieves. Um, so the thieves starter kit, uh, I'm going to read it to make sure that I get them all right. It comes with the toothpaste, um, the mouthwash, two bottles of your thieves cleaner, two of your foaming hand soaps, two of the thieves spray, and two of the hand purifiers. Um, plus you get a 15 milliliter bottle of thieves oil, and then um, a bottle of Stress Away and some samples of some of the other products that Young Living offers. And that, um, that kit is 160. Then you have um, the premium starter kits that are oil-based. Those come with 11 different bottles of oil and your samples of some of the other products plus your choice of diffuser. Um, the diffuser options, you have the Aria, which is the high-end um, 
I, I don't have one and April doesn't have hers behind her. So uh, it's, it's really pretty though. It, it's a glass dome and it does spa music. It's, it's really pretty. Um, with, with the Aria diffuser, it, the kit is 260. There's also the Rainstone, which is the little black one. Um, it has um, a remote control. It has an ionizer in it. If you choose the Rainstone, then the kit is 205. Or you can um, choose the Dewdrop or the Desert Mist Diffuser that's behind April. Um, and if either of those options is 160. Um, did I leave one of them out? Oh, and then if, if you're geared towards you want to be, um, you want your first switch to be your makeup, then they have the Savvy Minerals kit as well, which is just makeup. <laughs> So. Thanks, Crystal. Um, I do want to make a note, if you are a member already, um, you can purchase one of those Thieves starter kits if you want to make a bunch of changes all at once um, mm -hmm. as um, far as, you know, the Thieves products go. Um, another great um, option that Young Living has, unfortunately it's out of stock at the moment, but it should be coming back into stock soon, is the Thieves cleaning kit. and um, the Thieves Cleaning Kit comes with a bottle of the Thieves Household Cleaner. You get a bucket, um, I think you get a spray bottle with it, you get a cleaning cloth, and then you get five bottles of oil that are um, very useful when it comes to cleaning, and you get a little case to put them in. And then you also get um, a recipe book with um, cleaning recipes in it. So um, that I believe is about $79. Um, but again, it is currently out of stock, but it should be coming back in soon. It's been a very popular item. Um, and that gives you a lot of different ideas of ways that you can um, you know, clean your home using essential oils and the Thieves Household Cleaner. Um, Another great option, if you are looking to make a bunch of changes, you know, like we've talked about baby steps tonight, um, and that can be, you know, kind of overwhelming when you hear about all this stuff. I know the first time I was learning about all this, I was like, oh my gosh, I'm poisoning my home, I'm poisoning my family, you know, what am I gonna do? But I just had to take a deep breath and just start making baby steps. And a great way to make baby steps um, is by participating in Essential Rewards, which is the optional frequent buyer club that Young Living has. Now, um, if you choose to enroll in Essential Rewards, there's not an extra fee or anything, but to be on Essential Rewards, you do have to place a 50 PV order, which is about $50 per month. Um, again, you can start and stop it at any time, but the longer you're on it, the bigger the rewards you get. Um, you earn a percentage back of your Essential Rewards order in the form of points. So the first three months that you're on Essential Rewards, you earn 10% back in points. Then months four through 24, you start earning 20% back. And then when you've been on Essential Rewards for 25 months or more, like me, you get 25% back on your orders, which is amazing because, you know, I get excited when I get 5% off at Target with my red card. This is way better. Um, now those points add up and then you can um, cash them in for products that you choose. Um, you can't choose every single item that Young Living has to offer, but you can choose the majority of the items. Mm -hmm. New products, they won't allow you to um, redeem points for, and diffusers are another thing that you can't um, purchase with those points. But most of the oils, most of the um, products we talked about tonight, um, actually I think just about all the products we talked about tonight, you can use um, essential rewards points to get for free. And um, I, like to get my laundry soap for free because I don't know, just something about not having to pay for laundry soap makes me happy. <laughs> so um, Essential Rewards also um, gives you a um, gift of a free bottle of oil after you've been on it for three months, six months, nine months, and then 12 months as well. Um, and there's some other perks. Um, if you place orders of 100 PV or greater, you get some additional freebies each month. Um, it really is the best way to start making little swaps if you're looking to make changes, you know, and you want to try some of these products, but you don't want to try them all at once. You know, maybe one month you focus on, you know, stuff for the bathroom, like the shampoo, conditioner, shower gel, deodorant. And then the next month, maybe you look at your, um, you know, laundry room. So 
change out your laundry soap and then maybe um, get the thieves household cleaner so you can start cleaning your whole house with it and each month you can make little swaps um, you know as you use up the products you have because I'm not about wasting money so I'm not gonna just like I didn't just ditch everything as soon as I found a found out about all the stuff. I was like, well, I want to use up what I have. And then instead of replacing it with something from Target or the grocery store, I replace it with Young Living products. Um, so Essential Rewards really is the, the best um, deal that Young Living has. It's, it makes it so easy to take those baby steps. Um, so the last thing that I wanted to share tonight um, was just to invite you to um, some upcoming stuff we've got going on. Um, I have a make and take on April 27th. It is a green cleaning themed make and take. So we'll be making um, an air freshener. We'll be making the carpet deodorizer that I talked about. Um, just making some basic thieves household cleaner as well as the wipes um, that I uh, told you guys about tonight. So um, I do have that coming up on April 27th. And Crystal um, is going to be at a wine festival um, that's also a fundraiser to raise money for cancer. Um, and she'll be doing that, um, it's called the Dogwood Wine Festival, and that's on April 28th in the Richmond area. So if you're there, be sure to stop by and see her. And if you have any questions about any of this, feel free to reach out to us. Um, we are here to help you, and we don't want you to feel overwhelmed. We wanna help you make those baby steps, um, because every change that you make is important. And every time you, know, you swap out one thing that's you know, one less collection of chemicals you're exposing yourself to. So each of those changes is important. And, um, you know, we're here to help you with those changes. Now, if you have not started using Young Living yet, and um, you see this video later, um, someone showed it to you, be sure to go back to the person that referred you to the video um, to get started. Since it is a referral based business, we always want to um, work with the person that, that introduced us to Young Living. Um, Thank you again for uh, taking some time out of your busy schedule to learn about some very simple swaps you can make to green your cleaning, um, whether it's cleaning your home or cleaning yourself. We hope that you have a great evening. Thank you.